Audio commentary. Number two. What? You were expecting maybe the Ghostbusters? <laughs> so yes, this, this is audio commentary number two for the top 25 videos of Noah Antweiler. This one is going to focus on more of the process of making and designing this collection of videos. Audio commentary number one was designed to be more for the casual crowd. You know, you liked the video, you wanted to find out some stuff of what it took to make, you know, what I cut out, and, uh, you know, maybe you wanted to find out about some Easter eggs. But audio commentary number two is going to dive much deeper into the rabbit hole uh, with more explanation to give you a better sense of why it took so long to design and make. I mean, 10 to 11 months? Why, Striker, did you need that long? This commentary will be more for the hardcore fans and for those that have their own YouTube channels and want to learn how I structured these videos in more vivid detail. I will explain more backstory and how I made these videos, and you'll get more of a breakdown on the technical aspects. I will cover the writing process more. I'll talk about making multiple passes during the editing process, learning new techniques, and just trying to cut down the overall length of this giant video. As always, this audio commentary will definitely be divided up into chapters based on the different topics, not the actual numbered entries themselves. So check the chapters for specific topics or just use the playback bar to find what you want. Now, you already had a bit of backstory in audio commentary number one, so let's just jump right into the video. I will try to not repeat myself from the first commentary, but certain things I will be bringing up so that I can go into more detail. So just know you might hear a little bit of it a second time. Highlander 2 the quickening? How about a good Highlander 2 dick kickening? Chef Ramsey. So here we are again. This is Striker. This this is the second audio commentary for the top 25 videos of Noah Antweiler and this is going to be the last audio commentary for this 15th anniversary of Noah Antweiler. So hey, thanks for sticking around. Now, I know don't be too scared off when I talked about uh, this being largely a technical commentary. I'm still going to be mentioning some uh, Easter eggs that are off in the background that I kind of maybe missed uh, the first time. And although I, w we will be talking about like the editing process, my scripting process, you know, and, and some other relatively perhaps boring stuff to those of you that aren't that interested in the whole creating a YouTube video kind of like thing. Um, you know what? I only have so many topics and eventually the topics are going to run out and then we'll talk about fun things like, some of the stuff, the, the new stuff that I bought, like a capture card and a new microphone. So, you know, that, that stuff's going to be in there. You can always, of course, look at the uh, the playback bar for the topics themselves because we're not going to be going, you know, uh, entry. We're not going to be going by, you know, entry 25, entry number 24. You know, it's not going to be divided up into that. It'll, it'll be divided up into topics. So some of the funner stuff is going to come. Uh, you know, unfortunately, an hour into this video, but uh, but hey, um, and I might have a couple of things to show on screen. I will try to let you know. Otherwise, you can pretty much minimize this video for the most part. But every once in a while, like I said, I will be talking about something that is popping up on screen. So you, you might want to see what that is, or I will try to, uh, you know, mention exactly what it is. But yeah, so this is, you know, don't worry. This isn't all hoity-toity and all, you know, stuffy geek talk. Um, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, try to lay off a little bit on the details and, uh, you know, try to have a little bit more fun and a little bit more energy with this. Hang on. I got a drink. I also made another I actually have... I, uh... I, I have a confession. I should... Should I tell it right away? Uh, this is... This is the fifth time I'm recording this audio commentary, and you might be yelling at the screen, Striker, what the hell? When your average YouTuber does an audio commentary, like like Noah Antweiler, or uh, Doug Walker, or does does Angry Angry Joe really doesn't do audio commentaries, right? No, 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 he doesn't. But uh, But yeah, when other people do audio commentaries, they turn on the video, they start right away. They don't have a three-minute intro to... You know, to an audio commentary, they talk about the stuff, and then if they get off topic, they get off topic, and then the video ends, and you don't sometimes find out anything about the video, and I'm okay with that, Striker. 
want to jump to a certain Well, story. you know, look, if I had a huge, well, I mean, you could argue making an audio commentary when you don't necessarily have a pretty sizable fan base to begin with. You know, what's the point? You know, if an audio commentary can't get 20,000 views in itself or 40,000, you know, why go to the effort to put it out? But, you know, I, I try to offer a bit of value, and I believe I got a pretty, you know, good head on my shoulders. So I figure that, you know, if anything, you know, if I'm doing everything that I'm talking about and explaining and it's not working for me, maybe you can take what, you know, I've learned and use it for yourself, and then you can blow up and have 100,000 subscribers. You know, I, I really... Somebody, you know, if I'm not going to become a big YouTuber, I'd rather have, you know, someone use the stuff I talked about and, you know, make themselves big. Ah, uh, yes, the uh, the thumbnails. I, uh, <laughs> oh, cripes, I'm going to need a shot for my energy drink. I have a monster energy drink. Oh, and since I've, I've been doing this... Uh, you know, I think technically this is the sixth time. But yeah, what, what I'm trying to get at is the fact that I, I can't just put out an audio commentary and, you know, just be okay with it. I have to, if I have too much um and ahs, if I, if, if I go off topic, I mean, seriously, like I, I basically bend one entire, because uh, I basically do both these audio commentaries back to back, right? In audio commentary number one and number two. Um, so I usually have one energy drink, uh, for that entire session. So yes, I've already gone through a four pack of energy drinks. And like I said, I believe I already did a uh, number five. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that for the two side videos or the, um, the tribute videos. Those are, I think that those were done like after the, th the third pass. So yeah, I did those three times total, but yeah, these are. You know, I want this to be good. I want it to be entertaining. I don't want it to lag. But when I was, you know, recording the two before, there came a point in the second, you know, this recording here, the second one where I talked about something that, you know, you guys didn't need to hear. Uh, you know, it just, it, it was a topic. It wasn't anything bad. It was just stuff that, you know, who cares? You know, you guys don't care about my own personal life. So I think I went a little too much into that. You know, and my situation, and I'm going to be trying to keep this a little bit lighter. I mean, it, it ultimately, it wasn't a bad thing. It's not like, you know, I, I, you know, killed a family member and I got away with it and uh, I'm on the run. Like, no, 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 it's nothing, nothing like that. Man, this, this audio commentary is going in a completely different direction. And I haven't even drunk anything from my monster yet. Oh, yeah. So I, I just I just opened it. I haven't taken a sip yet. Jesus, let me take a sip, and and we can keep going. Oh, mommy, that's the stuff. I will try to take out that belch. Uh, it's Future Striker. Remember to go back and and, and take <laughs> jag off. That's that's why I used that clip. But yeah, I had mentioned some stuff, so I took I took out those audio commentaries, and uh, you know when, when I take out one of the two audio commentaries, what ends up happening is that well I can't really remember what you know what Easter eggs I talked about in the first one, and quite honestly, in order for me to keep all the topics straight that I talk about between these two different audio commentaries, it's just easier for me to throw both of them out and start all over again. Because, like, you know, well, I, I know I talked about Zelda Scott and Game Crazy in the first one, but it's like, well, if I'm redoing a particular audio commentary, it's like, well, did I mention Zelda Scott and the fact that Spoonie, you know, would often fill the frame instead of having black bars on the side of his stuff? Like, see, you can tell Zelda Scott, like, that's the name. Clearly, that's what it is. But, yeah, but Spoonie zooms into the image or else he stretches it. And I mentioned that in the last one. So it's like... You know, I, I, it's hard to keep straight what topics you're, I mean, what subjects you're talking about. And it's like, well, do I mention, you know, the, the cropping issue that Spoonie has? Well, no, I, I talked about it in the last one. So now I know I don't need to talk about it. But like I said, that's why I've, I've redone this thing, uh, several times. Uh, we, well, we'll, we'll talk again about the thumbnails once I get to a spot where one of them pops up here. But, uh, but yeah, this was, uh, this was one of the best training videos. I did see the Wendy's one, of course. Uh, I did like the little song for Wendy's. 
loves to read. The th <laughs> okay, the, the thumbnails. Let's let's talk about those stupid thumbnails. So the the thumbnails came out of it wasn't the fact that hey, I'm a huge fan. I'm going to show my huge nerd boner uh, and slap it in your face by showing you how big of a, a fan I am by showing you my thumbnails that I made personally. It's like, no, I mean, I made them so I could visually identify the videos myself on my Xbox 360. Because on Xbox 360, you know, if you if you named a picture the same as a video, it would show up as a thumbnail on the video itself. And I thought that was actually kind of cool. And like Xbox One doesn't do that. It just uh, it shows the video, then it shows your picture right next to it. So it's like you know. And I haven't gotten uh, an Xbox Series X yet, and I I assume it does the same thing. I don't know if I've watched uh, videos on my hard drive through the PlayStation Four or not. I would imagine that it doesn't it doesn't do the thing where it it adds the picture uh, to the video. But, uh, but so, yeah, so I, I really did create these because, um, you know, I, I created them like 2008-ish up to like 2013, you know, give or take the thumbnails I'm talking about, of course. And, and ultimately when it came to this video, it's like, well, I kind of needed some kind of visual representation for each item on the list, you know, each, uh, each review. And I did have... You know, some some of these videos I end up using the like right there, like that's the YouTube picture, basically. Man, that went by pretty quick, didn't it? I must have really been trying to cut this down. We'll talk about that a little bit later on the fact, but yeah, I, I tried to have when I have an image pop up on screen, I try to like especially like the title, like for Minority Report itself, I try to have those stay up for like about fifteen seconds or so. I try to make it show up long enough so that if you guys are scrubbing through the video. Which now it's not such a big deal because now they have chapters, right? You know, you can use the time codes and everything is, is really nice in the playback bar. But before, I, I tried to have it so that if you were trying to scrub through the video yourself, you know, you would see a new title on the bottom and you would know that, oh, okay, he's starting to talk about a new, you know, a new uh, entry in his, in his top 20 or top 25 or whatever. But yeah, the thumbnails were meant to be a representation of, you know, instead of having a screenshot from the game, instead of using a box shot from, you know, the, the intended game or movie, um, it was just something for me to have on screen, you know, something other than just the title of, you know, like Minority Report. And instead of just throwing up there the Xbox, you know, picture, I would throw up, you know, the, the pic that I already had created years ago of Spoonie and oftentimes you know you'll you'll see that I actually have like you know it'd be Spoonie in different costumes and whatnot and I would convey that and the big the big thing that that I, I know I'm not talking about the scripting process at all but hey this is entertaining to me so whatever oh th those balls did I mention that that's actually from later on in the video I really can't remember I know I've met I've re-mentioned it like literally probably 12 times well, not every time, but yeah, but that, that sequence is actually from later when he does the, I believe I can fly. I already talked about the, the musical sting, of course. So see, I am going to be talking about a few things in the background that, you know, I noticed before when I was listening to the audio commentary and I'm like, Hey, I didn't mention that other thing. So it's like, I, I try to store that in the back of my mind and make sure to tell you, obviously the, the, the. The thumbnail for Mission 6 is just, you know, it's just a simple a simple pick because I don't think Spoonie was on camera at all for the SWAT 4 Let's Plays. I don't believe so. I don't I don't believe he ever was. Well, see that's see that's a good pick. But yeah, that's that's all the thumbnails were. And like I was saying, the 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 whole thing of the whole thumbnail thing I was doing was the fact that you know, toward the end before we got the number 1 because number one doesn't matter because we go right into, you know, the betrayal song and then there it is, you know, Ultima. But it was like, uh, I believe the, the second entry, which was uh, the source, I didn't have a thumbnail for it. So the big thing that I was going to do was I was actually going to create a little PNG that said file not found on it. And then, you know, I was going to, when I got to it, 
I'd be like, file not found. Like, why why would I put that up there? It seems like in the amount of time that it would take me to create a PNG that says file not found, I could have just created a basic thumbnail for you guys to see on Highlander the Source. And like that, that was it. That was the joke, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so stupid. And and there there came a point when I didn't even get to the pro uh, it didn't go far enough to where I got to the process of actually making the PNG because I'm like this is stupid, you know I, I literally could have took a screenshot of you know Spoonie holding up and there's 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 plenty of you know times when Spoonie holds up you know the movie you know Highlander the Source during the review itself I could have just took a screen capture of that you know maybe added some text to it. Or, you know, put a couple things in there and then I could have just, you know, I could have wrote it off as, yeah, this is my original thumbnail. But no, I, I figured I would do that. And one of the things I cut, too, is I did actually mention the thumbnails a couple more times than I do. I didn't need to comment on the thumbnails every single, you know, thing. I kind of thought, like, well, that would be my little funny thing that I'm going to do, right? But it's like, well, after so long, you know, you realize, no, let's let's get on with Spoonie's stuff. You know, nobody cares about the thumbnails, especially I don't need to talk about them in the audio commentary for 10 minutes straight. But, <laughs> but um, I already mentioned the fact that I have those little, you know, the little uh, titles for each uh, video on the bottom. Okay, I think uh, I think we can actually move on to real stuff. I'm looking at my, but yeah, all all of this that you see here, you know, all what is it, seven seven videos, the three main ones, and then four four of the tribute videos slash trailers or whatever, uh, not including the audio commentaries, but yeah, everything else that took me it was it was about a full year of planning, writing, and editing everything that you see here. And it, it doesn't just include, you know, the, the top 25 video because I was scripting, you know, the top four Counter Monkey episodes as it originally was called. You know, see, I hear I actually mentioned the thumbnails. Like I said, there was a couple of times I mentioned like, you know, you know yes, these are my thumbnails. You know, I had a couple pics of Spoonie. I had the name of the, the movie and a couple screenshots, you know, of the girls themselves, you know, from the game. So it's like, you know. Instead of just like this, like throwing up, you know, uh, a DVD box art or something of the movie itself, I decided, you know, I'd, I'd have something with Spoonie on there for the thumbnails. Uh, but yeah, I, I ended up having to cut a lot, um, you know, from this thing. So I was, I was editing the script here and there from. Oh shoot! Oh no, no, I talked about this in the intro thing. Yeah, yeah. So you guys know. You know, I started watching the videos in February. I think I was scripting by March. And, uh, you know, obviously all this ends uh, basically in February of the following year. You know, by the time I finish all the uh, the main videos. Because it took me another four weeks to release all seven of the videos for Spoonie's thing. You know, so that, that brings us through like the end of February. January, February, March. So I still got March. But I mean... We're just wrapping up April, and the, you know these these audio commentaries are going to be coming out in May. I mean, they're they're going to start coming out in May. I I at least you know was planning on. But uh, but yeah, it was still like ten months of working on the script, and I I did have a few additional, um, what do you call it, projects that I was working on, like here and there, like uh, for October I had you know a couple of things planned, you know for uh, Halloween. So like I took like a month and I like put that together and I put some other stuff together and then I re-edited uh, those top 20 games that I regret buying. You know, I, I, I already had it done. I mean, the main video, but I just basically needed to take that hour and 43 minute long video and cut it down into each entry, you know, entry number 20, number 19, 18. And like that didn't take too long. I think that was a couple of weeks because I had to come up with the, uh, the little uh, Christmas jingle at the beginning of each of those videos. And, you know, I had to do a little bit of other editing stuff. So that didn't take long. But otherwise, yeah, for, for the most part, all of this that you see here, you know, all the Spoonie videos was everything that was being planned, you know, up to that point. You know, even though I had to throw out, um, you know, some of the stuff for the two side videos, 
by the time this came out, you know, as I said, I re-recorded the audio for it. I mean, I didn't completely change everything. You know, I kept my script for the two side videos. You know, the the, the top counter monkey episodes, but I I, uh, I vastly expanded it was still a decent adventure back when the uh, kid, but in classic forms i i i i'm sorry i looked at the little son of insano you know the little uh the little reddish blob i looked at him in my little in that little uh thumbnail and i completely lost track of, like should i mention son of insano and it's like no just just keep going on the audio commentary but then i completely lot lost my my stuff but yeah, so my goal for this video was going to be, uh, it's going to be an hour long, right? I mean, that's what it was at first. So, you know, when you do the math, which is what you sometimes have to do, is, okay, so if every entry is three minutes long, and it's going to be 20 entries, because at the time it was going to be the top 20 videos of, of Spoonie, you know, that equals 60 minutes. You know, and like three minutes per game, you know, when you're doing like a top you know a top 10 list or something like that like three minutes is is kind of quick like you know you have to kind of get to the point of whatever you're talking about you know if you're doing like a you know a top 100 games or something you know you're not going to be able to do three minutes a game because you know you're you're looking at i mean you're looking at you know 300 minutes of of footage you know that's that's over three hours. You know, you can't, you can't do that. I mean, that's, that's nearly four hours. So, you know, yeah, you know, when you're, when you're doing like a top 10 or something, you know, you can, you can do three minutes, but you know, for a top 10, that's going to be a 30 minute video, you know, and maybe you don't want to quite do that. So anyway, so I, I figured that with an intro and an ending that it would be a, a brisk one hour and 10 minutes. And I thought, you know, that should do it because I ultimately didn't want it to be another hour and 43 minutes like I just mentioned, my top 20 games I regret buying. For some reason, uh, you know, for some reason I thought that the reason that nobody, you know, checked out my top 20 games I regret buying is because it was a single video that was an hour and 43 minutes long, you know. And, you know, I mean, I, I covered the topic really well. Several games were like five minutes a piece that I talked about, but I mean, I, I felt like I covered them really well and I was really proud of the work that I did, but you know, it was like what, 400 views, you know, maybe 800, but yeah, I've, I've slowly, you know, kind of realized it's not about necessarily how long it is because if somebody like, uh, you know, Kadikaris or, um, well, not, not necessarily brutal moves. He did video game stuff for a while, but I mean, you know, Kadikaris has actually been doing like hour long videos uh lately and he's been getting about two two and a half million you know per video but it takes him about you know four or five months to kind of do each one you know it, it takes a bit of time to do uh you know that kind of fast editing and i'm i'm looking um but like you know if, if uh, james rolf comes out with an hour-long video i mean most likely he would he would put that into two different parts right but it's like, you know, everyone's going to jump on that and, and watch it, you know. So it's really not a, it's not necessarily about the fact that, you know, you made too long of a video, although it can be that. But, you know, I always felt if the quality is good, people should stick around. But, you know, people will have busy lives. So for the most part, I think and, and Spoonie has mentioned in audio commentaries before or at least one specific audio commentary that. He doesn't expect you guys to, you know, stick around any longer than what your average uh, TV episode is. So he would always try to keep, you know, his his reviews to about, you know, 20, 25 minutes or kind of 30 at most. Because when it came to Highlander, the source, you know, that was 42 minutes long. So that was the longest review that he had ever done. But he felt like it, you know, the, the content itself or the. You know, the material deserved to be longer. So, but, but yeah, so I, if I was figuring that, I didn't want it to be really long. Because, you know, I thought that an hour and 43 minutes is just too long. I thought, you know, a top 20, I can maybe get away with an hour. So that was my goal. Yes, yes, I know. In the end, it's going to be an hour and 39 minutes. But uh, just, just, you know, humor me a little bit. 
but I timed myself uh, reading certain sections to get an idea of how long each entry should be. And I decided to aim for 400 words. You know, I could read through 400 words in about three minutes. So, but many, I, many of my entries would end up being about 500 words. And some were 600 words or more, like Final Fantasy VIII, Highlander, Robo War, or almost any of the Let's Plays, because, you know, you're talking about taking, you know, four or five hours worth of footage from a Let's Play and trying to condense that into, you know, three minutes? I mean, you know, like, I did the work. I was going through all the entries and finding all this humorous, you know, footage and whatnot. So I felt like the Let's Plays needed a little bit more time to breathe. You know, when you're trying to condense, you know, a four or five hour let's play, you know, into, you know, five minutes or so that that seemed OK. But uh, but yeah, but by by the end of May, I finalized the list of videos itself uh, before I knew several videos that were going to be in it. And I was writing some of those entries. But at a certain point, I know I needed to finalize the list. But uh, SWAT 4 didn't make it in, into the top 20. And neither did the game crazy training video. And I kind of liked the Minority Report review as well. So, as I had mentioned in the other audio commentary, um, I really wanted SWAT 4 to be in there. So I expanded it to be the top 25 videos of Spoonie. Because, I mean, come on, you got to talk about SWAT 4. So, and, you know, even though I, I, I mean, I only highlighted, obviously, Mission 6. In hindsight, I could have just included the whole of the SWAT 4 as a complete let's play. I, You know, I know I said that, well, each mission is its own thing, and they're all separate. And, well, yeah, that's true. But, I mean, ultimately, I still got to do what I wanted, right? I still show you, you know, it's like, hey, Mission 6 is where all the big stuff comes in. That's where you need to, you know, that that's where the cool stuff, that's where it begins to be funny. And, uh, and then I still showed you plenty of clips, you know, from later, you know, from uh, episode, I mean, mission uh, 10 and 11 and 12, I think 13 as well. So, so, you know, I, I still got to kind of do what I wanted there. But, uh, but yeah, there, there, there came a point when I realized that even though I was making each entry three minutes long, uh, that was only the length of me talking, and it didn't include any footage of Spoonie yet. Uh, so I decided that I wanted to include one minute of footage of Spoonie, you know, talking for each segment. You know, this is his top 25 videos. You know, as I had said before, if it was just me talking and you had no footage of Spoonie, but, you know, just in the background, I mean, it would it would be okay but uh see i'm still mentioning those those stupid thumbnails you know like that was like i'm almost justifying the the fact that i put them in there well i'm trying to i'm trying to remind you also that you know they're my thumbnails that i made back in 2008 2010 you know so that's why they don't look that good it's not because i you know i didn't stop and and make new ones you know i just i just didn't have time to be making you know brand new you know full size 1080p you know, screenshots for every one of these. This was clearly an early video in Spoonie's career. But, uh, okay, where was I? I was talking. Spoonie, okay. Uh, you know, one minute of, of Spoonie in each one. And I just didn't want to have a segments with me just talking over Spoonie's footage. You know, you, you need to hear his voice. I thought that was stupid. So that, that was very early on. Uh, so the new idea was to have one hour total of me talking mixed with 30 minutes of Spoonie. And uh, so, you know, 30 minutes of Spoonie footage. Uh, the first five entries, I was going to try to cut to two minutes with footage of Spoonie. You know, so they were going to be short. But it's like, you know, uh, I had just added, you know, instead of it being a top 20, now it was a top 25. So, you know, you got to remember that even though those first five are only going to be two minutes apiece, that was adding another 10 minutes. So then I, I all of a sudden hit my, my magical number that I hated. It was an hour and 40 minutes again. Uh, and, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, uh, the SWAT 4 thing was way over two minutes. So, you know, I was, I, was, I was trying to stay, you know, on average. You know, sometimes I might talk about, I think there's some of these were actually like a minute, minute and a half long. 
So I tried to save, you know, some seconds on certain entries to make other ones longer. But uh, so, yeah, the the writing process was long. I would often uh, have counter monkey episodes going on in the background while I was scripting. I would cut down, you know, what I could. I would remove stuff from each of the entries, then maybe add some more back. Uh, many entries were around 400 words. A few were 350, and others were over 500 words. So it, it took a little while to to get things right. But he must have recorded footage for about 10 different games for these three videos alone. You know, I'm still I'm still actually pretty shocked on the FMV stuff that FMV games available. You know, I like I said, I doctored that. I made that up. Gabriel Knight too. You know, you can't you can't just type in FMV game and search on GOG. Um, I should have put Wing Commander, but I was kind of surprised. Like uh, like this game here. What is this? This is Fox Hunt. Fox Hunt isn't on there. Johnny Mnemonic isn't on GOG. Uh, Critical Path isn't either. Um, let's see, Mega Race 1 and 2 are, they're part of a pack. The Wing Commander is. It's really, it's really only the ones, oh, Ripper isn't. It's really only the ones that, uh, that became, uh, famous franchises in themselves. Like, obviously, Wing Commander, you know, Wing Commander even had a DVD release. And, uh, and there's actually a guy out there that actually did a HD, uh, AI enhanced upgrade. Or it uses uh, AI, uh, how, what do you call it? AI sampling or whatever. So it basically upgrades the video footage. And people were asking, like, oh, well, you know, this is going to get taken down pretty soon. And and the guy said, it's like, well, no, because, like, he created the AI language to sharpen up the image. And it, it, it does actually look a little bit better. And uh, so, but it's like, you, you know, you still have to have a legal copy of the game. You know, from like GOG or I think Steam. So like he created, it's, it's basically just in a set of instructions. You know, you're not downloading the whole game. So he basically did that for, uh, he did it for Wing Commander Prophecy, Wing Commander 3 and 4, I believe. And uh, and like this is just in like 2020. So like this is, this is a relatively newer thing. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. I can't remember what it is. I am so sorry. I could actually find out if I, if I, um, you can find it on your own. <laughs> just, just, it's just one of those things. But yeah, so yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty surprising on how many FMV games, you know, from back in the day actually aren't on GOG, even though GOG does have, you know, it's got all the new stuff, of course. Uh, and mostly it's got, you know, like I said, the, the bigger franchises like uh, Tex Avery. You know, it, it's got those on there, like Overseer, you know, because, you know, well, it's a it's a it's a company that's actually still around and they're still re-releasing these games, of course. You know, that's that's part of the thing, obviously. Um, Should we do the editing process? Let's do the editing process. Uh, so when I recorded my voice. You know, uh, recording the audio for all three parts, you know, the top 25 videos of Noah and, you know, the video you're watching here. I recorded all the audio for this script and also the two side projects. And that was a recording that was just under three hours long. And that is that's with all the takes, you know, all my mess ups and no editing. It's just the raw audio. You know, it's basically I hit the record button and, you know, if I mess up or I make a blunder, I just say redo, I give myself a second or two, and then I start to do the line again. That's why it's three hours long, you know, uh, because, you know, I, and, you know, it's, um, I'm sorry, I just, I was thinking of, of saying something, and I thought, uh, you guys, it, you guys don't care about that. But so I played around the audio a bit, you know, I had a new mic, and I had new settings, I mastered some of the audio. Uh, a few different ways, and I made like a 20-minute video. I uploaded it to YouTube. Uh, it's not listed, so don't don't go try to find it. You know, it's a, it's all set for private. It was just for me to watch, and I listened to it because that's what I do now. You know, I, I've made some mistakes before, but now basically every video that I make, I list, I purposely upload it to YouTube, and then I listen to it on my TV because the difference in audio between 
you know, just your regular computer speakers is fine. But when you listen to it on a TV, uh, you know, you can have an, an overabundance of bass that you had no idea was there. And and like I had done on a previous video, it almost made it, it made it really hard to watch. Like I really had to crank up the audio on my TV to try to hear what I was talking about. This was also his longest and review across so I uploaded it to YouTube and I listened to it and I didn't like the settings that I recorded with. I made some changes and then I rendered it out again and I was much happier, but you know, I was, I was trying to, I was trying to fix the original recording and I got close to it being usable, but I still wasn't happy with it. You know, I, I, you know, I tried to clean it up. I tried to add another equalizer effect on top of it. You know, there was a little bit too much bass to it and it was kind of annoying. And, and, and ultimately I, I went into the settings of my microphone and then I, I, I made a few changes and then I, I recorded a new piece of audio and then I rendered that out and then I put that on YouTube and I'm like, you know, yeah, this is much better. And I could, I was getting close to replicating what the new settings were, but it wasn't quite there. And I just figured, you know what, let me just record the whole thing all over again. So I threw out three hours of, of, of recording and you might think striker, you're stupid. You're an idiot, but it's like, you know, it's three hours of recording, which means that in order for me to go through that and edit it down to what I need, it's going to take me over three hours because you know, as the creator of the content, I have to listen to that entire file to make sure that I, I not only get the, the right take, cause I might do several takes, you know, I might do three or four takes before I finally come up with one. That's the best. So I need to listen to all the takes and make sure that I'm not missing anything. And maybe sometimes I might add a little piece of dialogue that I mean to use later. So like, I need to leave that in or cut it out and then stick it, you know, toward the beginning of the video or I mean of the audio recording. So yeah, it, it's a three hour audio recording is going to take you, you know, at least an extra hour or two, you know, when you do it, you know, it's just, you, you, you can almost double your time, you know, say if you record for 20 minutes, it's, you're going to at least take 30 minutes to go through that audio, you know, and edit it and, and, and cut out all the stuff that you don't want. You know, even if you kind of know you're in a little section that you need to just delete, you got to listen to it because, well, sometimes I've done that where I've taken like the first part of one of my takes and then I've taken the second part of a second take and I've kind of put them together because, you know, my emphasis or my, uh, you know, my acting, whatever you want to call it, it just it worked better. One of my favorite you know, so I, I would do it like that. But uh, so, yeah, I, I threw it all out. I, I ended up re-recording the whole thing all over again. And I've, I felt better. It, it was still good. It That three hours, uh, I mean, I, I recorded another three hours. And it still took over five hours to edit all that together. Um, and after editing, I ended up with an audio recording that was, for the main video at least, like I said, I did end up throwing out the audio that I recorded for the two side projects because I knew I needed to make it better. But uh, but yeah, so my my ending audio for the top 25 videos of Noah Antweiler was an hour and 24 minutes. So that was the intro. That was all 25 entries, the closing and end card dialogue. But I still had to add the end credit sequence, you know, with the... Uh, uh, the little Richard song, you know, that was going to be two and a half minutes alone for that, which, you know, we can argue it's three and footage of Spoonie. I don't have any footage of Spoonie. So I knew it was too long, you know, an hour and 24 minutes. So I started to edit this down. So it took several days and I felt like I was wasting my time because it's like you tell yourself, it's like, I need to finalize this audio and throw it into, you know, Premiere Pro and start editing the video. You idiot. You know, you're wasting your time, but it's like, you know, why edit an extra 10 or even 15 minutes worth of audio that you that you need to cut in the end? You know, why edit video to audio that you ultimately can't use? And an hour and 24 was too much. I needed to get this down to an hour, right? So I took time and, and, and I, I, I mean, I took some time 
I got it down to an hour and 18 minutes, then 14, then 12, and I finally got it down to an hour and eight minutes. You know, so I I cut out, uh, uh, what are we going to do, 15, 16 minutes? So about 16 minutes, you know, from even after me cutting out stuff before. So, yeah, 16 more minutes of me talking. And, you know, that it was gone. Uh, I had to. I mean, the, and it was it was reasonable, an hour and eight minutes. If I added 30 minutes of Spoonie to that, you know, that would give me an hour and 38 minutes, and I could live with that. You know, I, I don't know if I said this before, but for some reason, for some strange, weird reason, I had this magical number of an hour and 36 minutes. And uh, I, I, I don't know why. I just I, I thought that, you know, if I was going to go over an hour and a half, an hour and 36 was close to an hour and 40, but it wasn't too close, you know, because if people see an hour and 40, I think they automatically round it up to two hours. Right. You know, like, oh, my gosh, this is almost two hours. And it's like if I could just keep it under, you know, 140, you know, so I thought with 139, I could live with that. And. You know, because it's basically, well, it's an hour and a half and a little extra, right? I was trying to keep it in that kind of realm. But like I said, you know, when you're when you're watching somebody that you like, you know, on YouTube or whatnot, it doesn't matter. You know, if it's if it's James Rolfe and he does an hour long look at a Ghostbusters movie, you're going to watch that whole thing. Who cares? You know, I mean, well, if it's a podcast, obviously. But but I mean, yeah, you know, it's uh or if it's if it's a if it's a regular uh, angry video game nerd episode, I mean, yeah, of course. You know, if it's an, I mean, he normally wouldn't make an hour long one, right? He would cut it in half. But uh, but I mean, if it's if it's two hours or well, let's say an hour and a half, you know, it's like yeah, you know, if it's going to be in three parts, I don't care. You know, you're there, you're committed to that person. So, you know, yeah, um, you know, and, and, the, and the same thing with like Kid Icarus. Like, I don't I don't care if his video is an hour and seven minutes or if it's an hour and 14 minutes, you know, like if it's on Crash Bandicoot, I'm going to watch it. Well, I mean, if it's on really anything, you know, like I'm, I'm going to watch, you know, his content. It doesn't matter if, if it's extra. It doesn't matter if it's an hour and 20 minutes. You know, that just means more content for me. Or a peanut butter gamer. He doesn't necessarily do hour long. He's he's done some longer stuff though. Well, it's hard with his editing process. His editing process goes, you know, it, it's really fast edits and whatnot. So I'm sure trying to do like twenty or thirty minutes like that. I mean, John Tron has a similar style too. You know, where they have like little arrows and things shake and the camera rumbles and you know you got a lot of little special effects and cutaways and things that move fast. That kind of editing takes you a long time, you know, so, uh, you know, you're looking at an easy pr probably 40 or 60 hours, you know, to edit something like that at that kind of pace for like 20 minutes. But uh, so anyway, the uh, editing the audio, uh, I mean, I spent days editing the audio. I told you that I took out small gaps in between words, getting my sentences tight and uh, close enough to each other to make my dialogue quick but still understandable. Uh, I, I do this all in Audacity. You know, it's a free program because editing audio in Audacity is, especially with the last couple of updates they did in 2021, it's much easier than trying to do it in Premiere Pro. You know, trying to, uh, you know, just simply highlight, you know, a, a little part of your audio and, you know, you cut it and it automatically, you know, uh, compresses it all together. And like in Premiere Pro, like all you can do is, you know, cut out a little section and then you have to move it over yourself. Well, I'm sure there's there's shortcuts in order to uh, to do it, but it's just it's just easier in audacity. You know, it's easier to to, to master it and, and get the the compression and all that stuff right in audacity and then bring that over to Premiere Pro instead of having to do all that stuff there. It's also less intensive on your processor. If I've I know I've said that before, you know, before I used to actually do all my audio processing inside of Premiere Pro, but that would really bog down your computer. I mean, it was, it would bog it down to the point where, you know, whatever video I had was unplayable. That's what it was for the, uh, when I got like 40 minutes into one of my hour long Metal Gear Solid 5. I think it was the beginner's cut. So from now on, you know, I've, I, uh, from then on, 
I should say, I started editing all my audio and, uh, you know, doing the compressor and normalization and all of that, you know, into Audacity. So I do as very little in Premiere Pro. Fans have enjoyed this review so well. I don't know if I said this somewhere else or not, but I didn't actually edit the intro completely or the outro to this main video until all 25 entries were finished. Uh, I had a big pool of of footage of Spoonie videos, of course, that I had been going through two months prior. But once I started to, uh, I didn't actually have the video clips from the main 25 entries until I actually started to work on the main 25 entries. Now, this didn't include the Let's Play entries. The Let's Plays I had to go through uh, ahead of time because I actually put the video segments together for the Let's Plays in another project first, and then I brought those over into this video project because I didn't have room to place all, you know, four or five hours of a Let's Play in my main timeline, you know, for this specific video. You know, I, I there wouldn't be enough room, you know, just to put all that footage in there, just to edit together a six minute segment. So I did that in separate uh, projects ahead of time. I just I just had to organize it like that in order for it to work, you know, because that was just too much footage, you know, like like Phantasmagoria. Like, yeah, like I said, I had uh, what was it? 20, 25, 26 minutes of Phantasmagoria, you know, all all the stuff all together uh, so i had to do the let's plays but yeah i didn't have the individual uh like for clones of bruce lee like there was a couple of funny moments in that so then i would take you know those clips out i mean i would take all the highlights out and then i would put that into one of my other projects right my other document essentially because i told you before that i had uh, i had three separate documents of footage of spoonie and you know it was like three hours for each one and I mean, I mean, that that was correct. I had like two of those uh, projects were three hours long of just clips from Spoonie, you know, 20, 25 minutes from Phantasmagoria and all of its, uh, you know, all of its sections spread out, um, you know, 26, 26 or 27 minutes from Ripper, you know, uh, I believe Final Fantasy eight was like 45 or 46 minutes. I believe I told you, I think from final, I think from part eight alone of Final Fantasy VIII, I had 10 minutes of footage that I had clipped and set aside. I will try to put up a little picture of, of this. Um, so you can kind of see that I basically had, you know, like each, each little grouping of videos, a little banner on top. And then that banner has the actual name of, of what footage is underneath it. So I could kind of tell. You know, and that, that's how I organized them. You know, I had like little spaces in between each each particular video. And then they had like a little uh, a little picture, basically, on the top. And then I would I would stretch that over the, the course of the, the footage so I could tell what was what. Um, I'm just looking. I'm looking. Editing each entry. Yeah, yeah. So the the basically, yeah, the intro I didn't actually edit until I had all 25 entries basically done. You know, and then I could take little footage from Demolition Man review, and uh, you know, not necessarily the Let's Plays because those those were already cut. But uh, but yeah, then uh, footage from the. Uh, what am I thinking? The, the Runes of Virtue number two, you know, that review. I had, like, footage from that, and now I could take, you know, now that I had gone through that episode, now I can take clips from that and then throw it at the beginning. Because, yeah, I mean, I spent, I spent uh, what is uh, five months heavy on editing, putting this thing together, and two of those months were just going through all the other videos, you know, not the main 25, well, aside from the Let's Plays. But pretty much, you know, the Let's Plays and everything else, all the other clips that I wanted to use for this video or the other videos, you know, that was two months, you know, two months of, you know, going through every one of those videos and clipping out like, you know, him saying McFly there or Benzai, you know, dancing, you know, it wasn't that I was going to, you know, it wasn't that I, I had time coded exactly only the things that I was going to use. Like, you know, I would, I would time code all the stuff that I thought was kind of funny. And then that would give me a bank of, you know, footage to use. 
you know, so I had 20, what did I say? 26 minutes of, or was it 22? You know, like 22 minutes to pull from for this little five minute segment. So I, I took some of the best stuff that I could, you know, some of the funny stuff, and then I put it all together. But in 2008, unbeknownst to me, a guy named... And this was, uh, you know, this is kind of cool. I, uh... I didn't necessarily have a conversation with Curtis, as as the name implies, but uh, but I really did uh, post it, or I mean, I, I posted a message linking to this, and he actually did leave a comment. He's one of the first uh, comments for this video on the day that I released it. Oh! That is oh that is that is good. I know I said before that I normally don't drink Monster because, you know, it has added sugar. But damn. You know, when I figured today, of all days, I wanted to have that sugar. This is uh, Ultra Rosa. There was like a peach mango, I believe, I saw. I kind of wanted to get that. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Every once in a while, we, we might actually, uh, I might actually pause in between to break up this audio recording. I don't like to have, you, you don't want to have, you know, if you can help it, you don't want to have more than an hour of audio recorded at any one time. Because you never know if there's going to be like some dropouts or, you know, you, you just don't need to have that big of a single file. So, so we probably will pause uh, uh, just shortly. I mean, I'll, I'll stop talking. I mean, I know. Thank God, Striker's going to stop talking. Then we'll 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 get into the editing process. We still got, you know, we're we're about what halfway through, give or take. We got some more stuff to talk about. I did like Nightmare. I liked I liked the the board game uh, original version of Nightmare, but you know it's just it wasn't that funny. And I I also liked obviously the Nightmare TV series, but I mean you know there's there's a couple of funny moments in that, but I never thought of it as being you know top twenty five material. You know you you I think I I said before like you know. This is something that you normally don't do. You normally don't have, you know, a top 20, top 25 videos of your favorite YouTuber, you know, and all their different movie reviews or whatnot. I mean, you normally just don't do it, you know, because it, it's really hard to to try to compare their work, you know, next to each other. Like, uh, I can't imagine, you know, like, can you imagine doing that with uh, Lewis Lovehog, you know, Linkara? I mean, he's been pumping out nearly nearly one comic book review a week for like the last six or seven years at least there's so much content i mean it'd be cool to to have like a you know a top 20 of his videos just to kind of you know have a place to start but it would be really hard to uh it's really hard to compare a producer's work to itself you know but like this is this is for the celebration you know, because ultimately, you know, you got a lot of stuff, like even with uh, with James Rolfe, you know, you got a lot of videos, like obviously the Rob the Robot video, you know, you got videos where he obviously put a lot more time and effort into it, you know, and then you got like, you know, three or four videos that follow that, that are, they're okay and they're fine and they, they fill the gap, right? Like not every single, you know, review that you put out, not everyone can be a complete banger, you know, they're, they're, they're gonna... You know, depending on the subject matter and, and what you get to work with, you know, sometimes you have a lot more fun or you put more work or you get more ideas, you know, like that. That's what it's like for me. Like, I'll I'll see something that you know, like a bad movie and like I'll get if it's a really bad movie, I'll get a whole bunch of ideas like for costumes and uh, different uh, sketches that I can do. You know, but like if it's kind of a mundane kind of movie, you know, I might not just be into it as much. I'm, you know, my brain might not be firing as fast. So, so Spoonie's got a lot of work that is completely funny. It's got, you know, like one or two funny moments or great moments in each one. But, you know, when you stack it all against each other, eh, you know, it's, 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 it's hard. You know, that's, that's why I said before. And this video remains to be more entertaining than the original. Number 10.
FMV Hell. Uh, yeah, yeah, Striker. What, what, what was that? I needed to. Uh, I told you. I needed to uh, stop the recording there. You, you lunkhead. But yeah, I was. I was basically going over the fact that it's. It's hard, you know, really, you know, comparing all of your favorite, you know, creators. Like, can you imagine doing a top, a top twenty-five uh, angry video game nerd episode? That's like, you know, man. I mean, you know, certainly you can create it. But, you know, there's a lot, you know, and there's a lot of mundane episodes for James Rolfe and his and his uh, AVGN character. But, you know, it would be hard because, you know, there's probably, you know, two dozen, you know, videos that you like aside from, you know, what would be considered his top 15 or so. Right. And it's like, well, you know, now you got to try to, you know, organize them and put them in order. And, you know, it's it's just it's a rough thing to do. I normally wouldn't recommend it, um, but it was it was this was a thing I wanted to do for Spoonie. So in in the editing, let's let's talk about uh, doing multiple passes uh, in the editing process. So so this is this is how editing works. If you don't know, if you you might think that you know that your favorite YouTuber like like uh, James Rolfe, they basically just. Uh, they start editing and they put everything in there right from the start and you know it just takes them a while to do it and it's like no no you actually go over several passes so like in the you know and, and you make little you make little adjustments and you know finer details so like so like when you oh, I was talking about uh, like Kadikaris or Jontron you know who have a lot of fast moving editing things well even peanut butter gamer you know, they have a lot of, you know, fast images and a lot of fast editing. And it's like, you can't, you can't do that just the first time through, you know, you, you put stuff in there, you mention things, you know, and then, then you can actually go back in there and like have an arrow pointing at what you're talking about, you know, and then maybe you want to have that arrow spinning, or maybe you want to have the background on fire as that arrow comes in, you know, you keep adding more and more stuff to it to make it more interesting. You know, maybe you want to have the arrow spinning, you know, 360 degrees as it's coming into frame, you know, like, you know, and you also want to zoom in to the, your subject as you're talking about them. You know, that's you, you do more and more passes in order to get, you know, those complex things in there. So when I when I edit uh, the first pass is basically when I put all the footage on the timeline, I put down the images down where they need to be and the length of what they need to be. So, like, when it comes to the titles, you know, like uh, Demolition Man, you know, like, I'll grab the picture and I'll just, I'll throw it down and I'll, you know, and like the uh, top, the fourth wall, you know, the thumbnail, I'll, uh, I'll put that down as well. I'll stretch it out for the amount of time I need it to be, you know, let's uh, 15, 20 seconds. And then I'll, I'll go back into the footage, right? So I'll put everything there. I don't alter any of these images. I don't do anything with the spacing or the animation on the titles or any of the pictures for that first run. I'm just getting all the different elements into the right spot for the timeline. For the most part, though, I will, like, size the video because obviously I am taking video from another source. So I want to have, you know, all these black borders that you see. I want them to all match up. So, I'm you know, I'm not going to, you know, hand animate each one of those to be the exact same. So that I usually would I'd figure out ahead of time. But uh, but I would I'll, I will end up editing it even further later on. Uh, this is probably going to be blurred again with the Ultimate Warrior on there, just like it was in the last video. Sorry about that, but I don't want this to get claimed. And and the WWE will visually claim my video just for having Randy Macho Man Savage on earlier and and him there. So that that'll be blurry again. But uh, then when I do the second pass, you know, now I figure out what size all the titles are going to be and where they need to be and how I'm going to animate them. So, you know, so now it's like, OK, now I'm going to have the demolition man. It's going to be on the bottom. It's going to be, you know, so far from the bottom, uh, the image itself that says the title, you know, like entry number 11 or entry number 10, you know, that's going to be, you know, so big. And, uh, you know, like maybe I need to increase it to 140 percent. Maybe I need to increase it to 180 percent, you know, but it's like that's that's what it's going to be. So the you know, the title for every one of these entries is going to be roughly in the same exact place. And it's going to be the same size, you know, for every one of them. And then I decide, like, OK, well, the, the little thumbnail I'm going to put in the upper right corner, you know, what's that going to be? 
or you know what 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 you know am i going to put it all the way in the corner am i going to have like a border around it am i going to put a uh, you know am i going to do anything different to it so i i decide all that kind of stuff you know like the thumbnail i'm going to have actually do a cube flip is what it's called i'm going to have it flip from the uh the right side of the screen and the, the the main titles like see like that that's that's the flip that's a cube flip is what they call it you know it's kind of nice when you're you're placing like a video or something on top of something else i wouldn't do it with everything but uh but when it comes to well like see like that for wing commander it slides in from the left so like i make sure like all these titles are going to slide in from the left and i'm going to have you know a little bit of space in between you know the 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 top i mean the the side so i'm gonna i'm gonna fine tune a lot of those things you know i'm gonna animate them they're gonna stay on screen for 15 to 20 seconds then they're gonna do a, a film dissolve or perhaps a, a different kind of dissolve you know like those, those two things they slide on and they slide on in a different cadence you know they don't slide together because that might look a little weird so so that's that's the second pass you know i i do cross dissolve I have things fade away if possible, if possible. And I might be like missing an image for something like that. Jesus, that is so loud every time, even though I I have like on like the first step of audio, just so I can hear this in, in the background. Maybe I, I shouldn't have had it in the background. It's kind of loud. Oh, I really want to replay the, the wing commander games. Um, that's so what I say. Oh, if I if I'm missing an image or like uh, you know, there, there came a point when I needed to I needed to have thumbnails for for all the the, the main three videos so that I could insert them into these videos and show like, hey, you know, I've got two two side videos. You know, where to find Noah Ant other videos today, and also the top five Counter Monkey episodes. You know, those are. That, I made that into a separate video. You can find that link at the end of this video. Like, well, I need to have the, uh, I need to actually create those thumbnails, you know, the full screen 1080p versions of those thumbnails, you know, for those videos. So, but, uh, you know, on the second pass, I will sometimes, I will skip those. Like if there's something that might need some extra, you know, like I need to look up another website, I might pass those over for the second pass. So I don't need to have everything in there, and it doesn't need to all be perfect. But you know, there will be a few things I will that I will skip. So then, when it comes to the third pass, you know, now I will worry more about the audio levels because, quite honestly, after the first couple of passes, you know, that that's where I do a lot of editing and and taking out stuff. It's like why why edit all the audio levels to be perfect if you're gonna cut out like eight minutes of content right from the start, right? So. So I usually wait on the audio, but, you know, now I start, you know, messing with the audio levels and making sure they're loud enough, you know, making sure like certain parts are really quiet in the background. If I'm talking, you know, now is the time on the third pass when I start adding missing images and sound effects. So like whooshes, dings, error message, no, no matter how long it takes, you know, now I take several hours to make these new assets. So like before I was talking about the fact that I didn't have you know, if I didn't have the thumbnails for all three of these videos already made, well, now basically I, you know, I, I save the, the program. I step aside. I open up Affinity Photo because that's uh, a program that I bought that actually works similar to Photoshop, but uh, it's not Photoshop and it doesn't cost me, you know, $22 a month to use it. You know, Affinity Photo, I, I highly recommend it. Because actually, I, I didn't realize it at first, but you know, it's a it's a relatively well. I mean, it goes on sale, but you buy it once and you own it. You know, all updates, all future, whatever. And that's what I needed. And also, I kind of realized that once I removed Photoshop from my computer, uh, I could actually open those exact same files in Affinity Photo. You know, it there was a, a little bit of, of stuff added to particular text that it didn't keep. But otherwise, the images themselves, the original font that I used on many spots and their original sizes, it kept all that info, you know, in Affinity Photo. And I thought that was one of the coolest things ever. I didn't realize it does that. You know, it actually uses the same info 
from Photoshop. And, uh, you know, then you can you can open up those files in Affinity, you know, even though it's a Photoshop file. And then you can save as and then save it properly in Affinity. And like I said, you know, when it when it came to, uh, you know, adding, uh, you know, uh, certain things to like, you know, like a stroke or a background to text, it didn't it didn't uh, it didn't carry over that information. I had to redo some of that. But my gosh, you know, just the simple fact that it remembers the original fonts and it remembers the original placing and all the other images that you have in there and all their different sizes. You know, it's pretty cool. So, but yeah, so there, there came a certain point when I needed to have the thumbnails for the main videos and I needed to have them done. So I would, I went into affinity and I spent like, literally it took me a whole day because, you know, as you may have noticed for the top 25 videos of Noah Antweiler, I have a version with an empty chair. I have a version with the little spoonies in the bottom. I have a version that also has the uh, 15th anniversary celebration, I believe, down in the corner. So I, I have, like, different things. And, like, when it came to, you know, then when it came to the other ones, like the top five Counter Monkey episodes, like, sometimes I would actually create a PNG of just the text, and then I would have the background image saved as a separate file. So that way I could actually basically create, you know, through the use of, like, you know, having text slide onto camera, you know, I could basically create the thumbnail in front of you in a video format, you know, and have it like animated, you know, or maybe have something jiggle back and forth or uh, not, not vibrate. That's just, that's just disgusting. It's sick. I might do that later, but, but, uh, so, you know, I, I would do that. So I would end up, you know, saving like several versions of the files, you know, sometimes with just the text, with just the background, because at any point I can take the background of any one of my videos you know, and then just throw a black and white effect on it. And it's like, I can use that for, you know, a, a generic background. So that's what the third pass is. You know, now the third pass is make sure, you know, I got to get all the audio uh, sound effects in there. And, uh, you know, no matter how long it takes, if I need to go to a website and, you know, grab some screenshots like GOG.com or I need to, like, create those, you know, FMV game, you know, search bar results for gog.com well then that's that's when i do that and i just i spend as long as it takes to create that asset and then i throw that in for the third pass like if you didn't know that you know even if it takes all day which is what it did for for those and then uh and then basically after the third pass you just keep doing passes until it's done you know you keep you keep cutting content if that's what it needs you know you keep uh you keep listening to the audio and you keep making little adjustments you know, because, you know, obviously the first time you do a pass on your audio, you know, you might miss something or you might not, you know, you might not necessarily hear something right, you know, so you need, you need to go over it again. But yeah, so I just keep doing passes until I'm done. I believe I added background music on the fourth pass. I'll talk about uh, the background music here in a little bit, but, uh, but yeah, I just, I just keep editing the stuff that doesn't work or it doesn't need to be there little by little. You know, trying to get the overall time down to what I want. And in this case, when I got it to one hour, 39 and a half minutes, that worked. It was under an hour, 40. And uh, so I, I believe I did six full passes by the time I was happy. And, you know, I didn't want to make any additional changes because there, there comes a point when, you know, you've gone over it and over it and like, you know, okay, all these images are sliding on. These images are supposed to flip around. They're working fine. You know, that's sliding over, you know, the, the, the image for Ultima Runes of Virtue that's staying on screen for, for 15 to 20 seconds. You know, like like these little images are coming on and they're they're in video form and they're they're showing stuff that's pertinent to what I'm talking about. You know, at a certain point, you know, all this time editing and doing all these different passes, you know, you're happy with what you're watching on in the preview window. You know, and it's like, OK, it's time to render it out. You know, that's. That's how it ended up with my uh, my two hour and twenty minute long, um, what is it? Top top twenty advanced tips for Metal Gear Solid Five Ultimate Edition. You know, like I was editing that thing for it was like two months, at least a month and a half. You know, of me also working three days a week. You know, all my spare time for the most part, and it's like I just kept going over it and over it and over it and over it, and, over it. and then all of a sudden one day it was like I I think I'm done. 
you know, like you would go through the entire intro and you wouldn't need to make any changes. You would go through, you know, entries 20 through 10. And it's like, you didn't really need to make too many changes and you would make, you know, little, little fine adjustments, you know, maybe like, you know, change the decibel of, of some audio by like one decibel or maybe half a decibel, you know, just to kind of, you know, sweeten it up a little bit. But yeah, eventually, you know, there came, there came a point when I was done and that's what, you know, that, that was different though, because the top 20 advanced tips, you know, that was done whenever I got it done. But in this case, I needed this done for a particular date, you know, January 24th. You got to admit that. Um, let's see. We got, we got learning new techniques in front of their fans. Well, we could, we could, we could talk. Then we got new equipment and that's, we got a few little extra things and that's kind of it. The combat is, is that really design. it? You can't tell what I think so. Yeah, because that goes in the next wrong. video. And you can't okay, so we're doing good. We're we're a little ahead of schedule, like I said. I hope. Anger is I haven't been looking at the video as much. And decides to pick a fight with a seahorse. You know, looking for uh, you know, some new stuff to talk about. I mean, it's the seahorses and it's Spoonie. What, what what do you else do you want me to add here? I did use a lot of footage of this because this is. There's only so many videos of Spoonie that are in 1080p, so I would find myself using a lot of them. I think I think the review for Final Fantasy 13 might be in 1080p. So any anything that I could grab, stuff that was in 1080p, you know, the the best looking footage, I would try to use that. Oh, hang on. Ooh. Oh yeah. Now I've got seahorses. It's not as cold, but. It's just going to sit there, isn't it? But okay, so let's uh learning new techniques. Let's talk about that. So when I did I might have mentioned this in my other audio commentary, I'm not sure. I might have mentioned this in one of my I don't think I did. I think I I purposely separated this, but I think I talked about it a little bit in my end credit sequence. You know, the the video for that, you know, one of the the tribute videos. But uh so when I was doing the end credit sequence, you know, the little Richard song from the Red Scorpion movie. Um, I looked up videos on how to do a freeze frame character introduction. So, which was, you know, partially made famous by the movie Snatch. Uh, Guy Ritchie, I believe, directed that. You know, like some some uh, YouTube videos were copying the movie exactly, while some others added some steps or additional effects. So I picked a version that I liked the look of, you know, one that was relatively simple for a freeze frame character introduction. Uh, you know, something that was simple to replicate without too many extra steps. I didn't want to, I didn't want to overdo it for myself. And, uh, while doing this, I learned out a few new effects that now I love using and I, I try to use them all the time. So, so I, I might, I might also mention some of this during the end credit sequence, but, uh, but this, this stuff should be kind of new, but. I basically, uh, one of the new uh, techniques that I learned is the black and white effect. I know, I know. It might be kind of uh, pedestrian. It might be kind of, you know, amateurish. But it's like, you know what? It's really handy. And you will actually see me use it a lot in this video. A lot of times when I have, uh, basically, you know, I need to put something in front of you. Instead of just having a black background, you really need to have... You know, please try to stay away from using a black background because everybody knows that that's, you know, yeah, sometimes it can look okay, but quite honestly, there's no reason why you can't have a background, you know, whether it's a wood grain table or whether it's something else. It adds some color, it adds some variety to it, you know, you really should. So the black and white effect is basically, it just simply... You know, you, you take the little thing and you put it on an image and it basically creates a black and white version of that image. You know, that's what you see when you see Spoonie, you know, in his little face, you know, out, uh, you know, hanging on the side of his chair. You know, I use a black and white effect. You know, it's really great when you need to add when you need to have something, you know, in front, like the name of a movie or a video game or or, you know, a video. Like, I'll just turn the background black and white, and it's like, okay, well, now instantly, you know, what I'm showing you in the foreground pops out a whole lot more, you know, instead of just having a 2D image on top of another 2D image. That's one thing that, you know, in editing, you don't want to do. You really don't want to just have, 
you know, especially of the same clarity, you know, one 2D image on top of another because there's no depth to it. You know, it's kind of hard for the, uh, the user to separate that. So usually, well, we'll get to the other thing that you add. But there's also what you can also that I learned is the the uh, Gassan blur, which lets you easily blur a background image or video, you know, so like this, that that's what you use. I mean, at least in Premiere Pro, obviously in Sony Vegas, it's going to be possibly called something different, but it was something I wasn't really using. So a lot of times it's like, you know, sometimes I turn an image black and white and it's like, you know what, it's still, uh, you know, it's still a sharp image. And it can still kind of interfere, especially if you're showing, you know, like I do, little boxes that are, that have white text on it. I mean, or a white box with text on it, right? Like that might bleed into a black and white image. So, you know, you can just blur the background image, you know, or you can do, you can add some kind of effect to it. But uh, the Gaussian blur, if I'm saying it right, you know, like you can blur it as much as you want. You can do 20% where you can still kind of tell what it is. Or you can blur it to 100% where, you know, it basically is almost indecipherable what it originally was. But like here, like that that's stupid striker, you know, plain background. It's black. I didn't do anything to it. You know, like that, that's stupid striker. Uh, sometimes if you're just showing one thing, it can be kind of okay. But, uh, and then the other, one of the other best additions, uh, the new techniques that I learned was the radio shadow. So that the radial shadow effect basically lets you add a shadow to an object. You can move the shadow around. You can change the size of the shadow. You can make it have a hard or a soft edge. You can have it, you know, be a little a little blurrier. Uh, you can change its color. You can even use the eyedropper icon next to the color and grab a color from the image or the video on screen itself. You know, it's such an amazing tool. You know, so like I could I could pause the screen here and have an image of the movie, you know, pop up on screen and I could use the color from his headband, you know, the exact same vibrant red and it would it would look like it kind of matches and that's because it does. Like I could literally, you know, pull that from from the video itself. And then I could add a shadow to it. And that's that's what I I mean I had to pretty much do that when I started to start to talk about the where to find Spoonie videos today because I had a lot of background images that were white because they were websites, especially on YouTube. And I had, you know, my, my typical little white boxes with text on them, right? Well, they, they blend together. So I needed to add a shadow to my little text boxes so that they would stand out. And and honestly, you see this in, I mean, everybody does this. Uh, Larry Bundy Jr., um, a lot of different, uh, what is it, wrestling with gaming? I forget I forget the guy's name. But a lot of, a lot of different uh, YouTube sites especially the ones that do um uh what do you want to call it especially that do like game history or whatnot uh not so much the gaming historian well maybe him too but uh, but a lot of guys will have if they ever have an image on screen they, they'll never have it just be a flat image on screen they will add a shadow to it you know they will add it adds a little bit of texture you know to your stuff and like i said now i use it all the time the black and white effect i use it all the time the Gasson blur, I use it all the time. I don't necessarily pronounce the word the right way every time, but, you know, just call it blur. Uh, the radio shadow, you know, I use that all the time as well. You know, it's 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 really great. I, I did, the, this scene did go on a little bit longer than normal. I, I did end up, uh, I wanted to leave it in, but it's, I had to get down to 139, you know, that I, I, maybe I could have left it. You know, ultimately you would you would have if I would have left everything in that I originally had. You're probably looking at a video that uh, honestly would have been about maybe 15 minutes longer. Um, no, no, because my original audio was an hour and 26, right? Then I brought it down to an hour and eight. And then, then it became what was it? Yeah, I mean, it probably would have been like another extra fifteen minutes longer. You know, it, it would have been like at least at least ten more minutes of Spoonie footage. Quite honestly, you know, I I cut out footage of Spoonie. But uh, and I mentioned I mentioned the white backgrounds. Okay. So now all I got is uh all we got left is new equipment and a few extra things. Okay. 
being relatively unknown. We got to talk about the background today, music. Don't really need to know a Hong Kong distributor, Amazon and Walmart. Well, like I said, uh, yeah, uh, your Hunter from the Future has also been on Blu-ray for a few years now. Uh, Robo War. Uh, I just didn't have time to mention your. I think is it Mercenary Fighters? Another Red Brown video. I think he, he there's another one of his that is also in Blu-ray, but you know, I just didn't have time. Or at least it's in HD. I think, surprisingly enough, uh, Amazon Prime actually had Robo War on there for a little while. Uh, it wasn't free to watch, but they did have it there where you could buy it. Uh, Robo War actually has an audio commentary from Red Brown, if you can believe that or not. Uh, or is it? I think I think it does. I think either it or your has an audio commentary from the man himself. And I heard like it's not it's not too bad. You know he like he. You know, clearly, he hasn't done a whole lot of audio commentaries, but he does interject uh, a lot of interesting stuff. And it's definitely worth uh, getting a version that has an audio commentary of him. But yeah, there, 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 there was a, f a few movies that have had that since Spoonie has, uh, you know, reviewed them, they have been released on Blu-ray like that. That normally was hard to find. And he did. You know, what I said was uh, true. You know, originally you did have to go to a, a, a Japanese uh, bootlegger, you know, that would have. There there you go. There's the black and white. You know, just simple, basic, and uh, it really separates. But what am I doing wrong? Well, Striker, you're using one flat image on top of another. If I would have blurred the background, that would have been able to separate, you know, the uh, the foreground image a little bit better. But, yeah, when you add a shadow to something, then it feels like it's actually there in front of you. You know, here it, it's just all flat. So that's that was one thing. But like I said, I wasn't actually using the uh, the the Gasson blur. Uh, I, I believe I just said that word three different times. If you're keeping I, I said it three different ways, each a different time. You know, if you're keeping track at home, I'm a I'm a piece of piece of crap. <clears throat> But uh, are we going to talk about the... Yeah, well, we need to talk about the stuff that we need to talk about. Okay, we did detect... Okay, new equipment. <laughs> you know, I, I don't have to... I, I didn't have to listen to the audio in the background on this, but I still plugged in my headphones. And it, it's, it's just the way Spoonie says stuff. It's still funny. You know? Like, that, that's what I've been trying to do with my own... My own content is I've tried to make myself laugh, you know, every time I hear myself, you know, say something a certain way, because that's, you know, that's how it is with Spoonie, right? When he, when he, when he goes ballistic on, on, on Titus and no, I'm not going to call him Titus. That's, that's stupid. Um, you know, Titus, you know, if you wanted to call him Titus, then it should be T I T not T I D anyway, that's, that's my, my Titus Titus rant. But no, new equipment. I got some new equipment, and I, I got some other equipment uh, ready to go. But uh, the new microphone that I got for this was uh, the PreSonus Revelator. Uh, these were these were the first videos that I released with this new microphone. I actually did do a rage quit in, uh, in two specific uh, Christmas games. And I was going to put that together and, you know, just, just some five to six minute long video. And I was going to put that out before Christmas. But then it came to a point when I needed to really buckle down and try to get this video done by January 24th. So uh, ultimately that Rage Quit 2 episode was going to be the first time you heard the new microphone. But I just didn't have time. You know, I, I wanted to release a video. You know, with the with the final audio, and you know that that would have probably been my test, but you know I ended up making changes anyway to it. But uh, but yeah, normally this was a hundred and seventy nine dollar microphone, but uh, I had someone selling it uh, a refurbished one for one oh eight. I think it was. Uh, what do you call it? I think it was the uh, Amazon warehouse. I really do. I don't think it was a specific seller. But uh, I did a little research on the microphone and, you know, found out that it was it was kind of a good one, especially if you can get the software. If you could get the software with the microphone, that was the big selling point of this microphone. You know, the microphone quality itself wasn't anything too special because uh, I was already looking at two other microphones. I'm trying to remember the names of those. 
done for one I'm drawing a blank. Ah, uh, shoot. But there was like a... Well, there was the uh, road had... Road NT or, or road... There was a USB version of a road mic. You know, R-O-D-E, the, the company. And I kind of wanted to get that. Oh, I can't remember the name of the other one. There was another microphone, too, that was like about at 130 or 140. But anyway, at $105, the uh, PreSonus Revelator, I uh, I decided to jump at the chance. And when I when I got it and I first tried to register it, it didn't work. It said that it was already registered. And I'm like, shoot, because in order for me to get the... Uh, the software for it, it would cost me a hundred dollars. And it's like, I mean, I was ready to do it, but that means in the end I would end up with a mic that was $200. And it's like, you know what? If I was going to spend 180 on something else, I, I should have done that. But, but, uh, but you know, to their credit, I called customer service. Uh, someone helped me out. I approved my purchase. And I got it registered, and I got the free software along with it. I got the main free software the that they use actually for all of their products, and then there's also specific software just for the PreSonus Revelator. I, I said that wrong. Uh, take two. Um, the PreSonus Revelator. There you go. You use that take, Future Striker. You you fat tub of. Anyway, there's there's no way I'm gonna do. I'm gonna change that. So so yeah, I got I got uh, that microphone for about 105. Uh, honestly, there you know microphones had been pretty expensive on YouTube lately, and a lot of them were were out of date. I did notice that the mic did eventually drop to 140, I believe. But um, considering that it includes the software, that's it still was a pretty good deal at the time. But there was a, there was a few other microphones also that you could get. Well. A used mic isn't necessarily bad unless you you don't need the software. But yeah, so I'm I'm kind of happy. I'm still trying to dial it in a little bit. It's getting pretty good. I'm kind of happy with it. My the only fault to the microphone might be my living conditions and the fact that I don't have you know like bass traps in my room, you know things to absorb the sound. That might that might be part of the problem. I'm not exactly sure. But also, I, I got another piece of new equipment that I got was the uh, NVIDIA Shield uh, Pro. Uh, I got this on sale for myself. It was my own Christmas gift for $180. And you might think, Striker, that's insane. But it's like, you know what? It only went on sale for $139 once, and that was back in 2017. So typically, the device is $200, and that's a bit much. But you know what? It went on sale for 20 bucks off, and, and honestly, that is the only uh, sale price that it has done for at least the last three years. So I figured, you know what? For 180 I don't want to get a used one. You know, let me get a brand new one, you know, and so I got it. I actually got it at the end of December, so I had it on me. But it's like I still had a month to go before this video needed to come out. The top 25 videos of Noah Antweiler. So I, I honestly, I didn't even plug it in until after I finished this first Spoonie video. Uh, and then when it came, uh, I actually did, I plugged it in. I think I, I put my information in for like Disney Plus and HBO Max. I, I did a couple of things, but... Uh, but I haven't really dove into it. Basically, my my whole idea with that is is that I can use it as a uh, what do you call it uh, emulation machine. Like it, it's actually a pretty decent emulation machine, although it's been out for five years. And you know now there are or, or I should say in the last year or so there have been a few uh, a few chipsets that are, are actually a little bit more powerful than the uh, the Shield Pro, but really the NVIDIA Shield Pro isn't so bad. You basically can emulate every, all Saturn games, PlayStation 1 games. You can do, I believe, most Dreamcast, and you can do some GameCube. Uh, you know, some of the more intensive GameCube games you cannot do. And, uh, and like, everything else underneath that, for the most part. You know, maybe aside from uh, the Atari Jaguar. You know, that, that's a little bit more difficult. But, I mean, everything else, you know, NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, 16-bit uh, is no problem. And, yeah, I can do I can do all of PlayStation 1. So 
I figured, you know, I could do that, and then I get myself a capture card, and then I can start having footage from basically any PlayStation One game, any Saturn game, uh, Nintendo sixty four. It does Nintendo sixty four pretty well too, and uh, so I basically. Uh, for the other audio commentaries, I, I was talking about the fact that I was looking at a specific capture card, but now, lo and behold, I got the capture card. Um, hang on a sec. It's right, it's right here. Now, let, let me take a shot. Uh, it's the, uh, what is it? The Aver Media Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus. So, hang on. Oh, that's the stuff! Put it in my mouth! Uh, Okay, you might be thinking, Striker, that's a piece of of dong. Why'd you get that? It's like, yes, I want to get an Elgato, of course. You know, there are some better ones. The reason I got the one that I did is because I can actually... Um, you actually don't need a PC to record footage. Uh, that's the selling point for me. There is another one out there where you don't need to have a PC and you, you can record directly to an SD card. But that one is, I think Elgato makes that. It's the four, the four K sixty, or something like that. But it's like three hundred dollars. Uh, ultimately, I would like to have that because you can actually save in the original format uh, without, you know, the original raw footage. You can save that in. But you know, three hundred bucks. That's quite a bit. So I got this one. Uh, normally, the uh, I, I need to take a look at it. Normally, this Aver Media uh, capture card, the the, the two plus, uh, normally it's about 140, and like it was, it was every once in a while it would go down to like 120. Somebody else was selling it for like 110, but it was on an opened package, and I didn't want that. And then all of a sudden, one day, because uh, I kept watching it, like literally every day, I was I was checking on it to to find a good deal. Uh, one got listed for 69 dollars. Uh, I know, giggity, of course. Uh, 69 dudes as as Bill and Ted would always say but uh, but no and it was it wasn't from another seller it was actually from Amazon warehouse so I kind of figured that maybe it was a product that got damaged you know because they said the box was uh, the box was damaged and I figured like maybe it was the kind of thing where you know you, you, there's a box that's damaged in shipping and they they have to still I mean they don't have to sell it but you know they, they can't sell it as new right? So I figured, okay, for sixty nine dollars, you know, pl you know, plus another five, because of taxes, of course. But it's like, yeah, I mean, sixty nine dollars plus shipping, like that was easily forty five dollars off. You know, the the next price I was looking at. So, you know, I, I jumped at it. You know, because it was an Amazon seller. You know, they, I mean, well, since it was an Amazon warehouse, like it doesn't have any seller data. So it's not like they don't have a rating. They don't have anything. So that's why I kind of thought that, you know, this is, you know, it's Amazon Warehouse. Like, so it should be, you know, fairly legit, right? And, and like, I just got it a couple of days ago, and I got myself an SD card. Well, it's a micro SD card that works for it. So, like, you know, that that's the next thing I got coming up is setting up my NVIDIA Shield Pro to handle well i need to get myself another uh another hard drive you know specifically for that machine i've got other hard drives but they're being used for other other purposes or storage or just you know overall general storage but uh so yes yeah, so i got a, i got myself a capture card i just need now to uh get myself another like maybe a two terabyte or whatever uh hard drive that i can use with my shield pro and then like I've already bought some of the uh, the better emulators on the Shield, uh, you know, through the the App Store or whatever you want to call it. So so yeah, I really am gearing up toward being able to use footage from, you know, NES, Super Nintendo, Master System, you know, through emulators. But I mean, still, you know, it's like I don't have my game collection anymore. So it's like you know, it's just it is what it is. And you all know that retro prices are are absolutely insane. You know, like. If you wanted to just buy a cartridge version of Contra, you know, you're still looking at like thirty, thirty-five dollars. You know, but it's like, well, I've got Contra on Xbox. You know, I got the uh, the what do you call it, the Contra Anniversary Collection. So you know, I'm not talking about that. But there's other games that don't have a remaster or they don't have a newer collection, like Mega Man, right? You know, obviously any Mega Man game, you know, you can play 
several seconds through emulation on something else. But games and books. so so hopefully that will open up uh, my videos to some more possibilities. I'm trying to think. Uh, we talked about that. Uh, did I mention that? Ultimately, I would like to get a mini PC that's powerful enough to run emulators for uh, PlayStation 2, the Wii, original Xbox, uh, you know, all the GameCube, uh, PlayStation 3, and some Wii U would be nice. I don't need to be able to run the Switch, and I feel like, you know, emulating the, the newest uh, console is, uh, you know, that kind of borders on... You know, uh, not copyright infringement, but you know, just just the legalities of of it. I, I don't mind emulating, you know, uh, systems that are not uh, you can't buy them anymore, or they're they're not manufactured. You know, emulating off of those. You know, I, I have no problem emulating like PlayStation Two because well, they don't make PS Twos anymore. You know, there's only so many PlayStation Twos out there. But, uh, but yeah, so I mean, I, I basically am looking at like a little mini PC because I want to run these at uh, 4x or 5x, uh, five times the resolution, you know, basically smoother than the original hardware. And, uh, you know, 1080p at 60 frames is what I'm shooting for. But I basically also want to run all my games that I got on GOG.com. Uh, they don't need to be real fast. And I know that I need at least uh, a lot of those games only recommend. Uh, like four four gigabytes of RAM, but uh, you know they they recommend eight. But uh, in order to do what I want to do, and in order to especially emulate, I don't necessarily need PlayStation Three. But I just thought that you know if I'm going to review like a PlayStation Three game, it's not the fact that I'm not willing to buy the game. It's just the fact that well. If I use an emulator, the game will actually possibly run smoother and you won't have as many jaggies on the screen, right? That was my main my main idea is that, you know, the the like original Xbox games and the, you know, Wii games, and especially PlayStation 2, I could run them at a higher resolution, you know, so they looked better. You know, way better than what the original hardware would do. So that that was my thinking on that, but in order to do that, I'd probably would need to spend around like 3 to 400 for a machine. And you might be wondering, well, Striker, why why are you getting this separate capture card that records to a micro SD card? You know, why why do you want this this mini PC thing? Um, you know, why can't you just use your your main computer? And well, my main computer, the whole reason for this, and the reason why I got the capture card that records to an SD card, is because my computer really isn't fast enough. So like, I don't think I don't think I can you know just get like an Elgato you know the good Elgato capture card. You know, for 200, uh, you know, the, the, the 4K 60, you know, even though I want to, I, ba I basically want to go in 1080p. That's what I wanted to capture in, 1080p at 60. You know, otherwise I'm kind of limited to 30 on the two uh, DVRs for both uh, Xbox and PlayStation. But uh, I wanted to do 60 frames. Um, I know we're, we're getting close to the end, but we still got some, some stuff to talk about. Um... But yeah, so I didn't, my, my computer, it uses, even when I'm recording audio for one of these videos, uh, there's no way my computer would be really fast enough to record footage off of a capture card and also record audio. You know, I pretty much have to shut down a lot of background stuff just to get this audio recording. Because uh, if you don't know, recording audio on a computer, like it takes a lot of resources. It really does, uh, depending on, on what your computer is. And like I said, I don't think I can do both at the same time. Uh, so I needed to have a capture card that I could record separately. And, you know, if I was going to play games on GOG, I don't know if I'd be able to record the screen at the same time and also record audio as well. So I've been, I've been trying to separate the two things. And also it would be kind of nice to have, you know, to have a thing like an Nvidia shield and a mini PC that would basically have, you know, all my emulation stuff. And then that way it's not taking away resources from my main computer. You know, that, that's the other thing. You know, obviously if I'm trying to uh, edit some stuff and I need to record audio for something or I need to quickly, you know, capture video, well, then I need to kind of maybe, I might need to shut down a couple of different programs in order for me to go back into, you know, a Saturn or a PlayStation game and record some more audio. I mean, record some more video. So... So this way, just it separates, so I'm not using my main PC for everything. You know that that that's the idea. Um, and and some of you, uh, should I? 
I want to capture footage from the mini PC. Okay, I mentioned that. But yeah, basically just having a separate computer running these games so it doesn't impact my main computer. You know, that's that's kind of the main thing because yeah, I don't think my, my computer only has eight gigs of RAM. And yes, I understand that the mini PC that I probably would get, I probably would put 16 gigs into it of RAM uh, as soon as I could. So ultimately that would have more, but I'm, I mean, I'm trying to also replace my main computer, but I'm just trying to do, you know, one thing at a time, you know, main computer, I, I kind of want to get something for around a thousand bucks, but you know, we'll, we'll see ultimately what it is, but I just thought, you know, uh, d dividing and conquering would still be pretty good. Um, shoot. I didn't talk about, uh, the, the background music yet. Different. Okay. Okay. So, so I, some of you might have noticed that I started to talk about the fact that I'm not going to have as much content come out. Uh, we're we're going to do this quick thing, then we'll go to background music, and then we will basically close it. So I know, I know, I'm going to end up going over again, but it is what it is. So, so don't worry too much on the fact that yes, even on my community tab. As it as is going to right now, I mentioned that I am I'm stepping back a little bit. Look, I I need to uh, I want to build up. I need to be working. You know, now now that you know COVID has kind of subsided some. You know, there's jobs out there, so I need to work in order so I can basically move and have some more room. You know, have some room and and get myself a camera, and uh, you know continue on with this. So that that might mean that you know there might be a, a year or two where I need to kind of not make as much stuff and, and work hard and, and, and take care of my bills and, and build up some money to where I can actually move and, uh, and start delivering even better content for you. So like, I don't think I would ever ultimately a hundred percent quit making videos on YouTube. Uh, you know, even at the state I am now where when I put out a video, it's, it's, you know, maybe a hundred views, right. Or maybe, maybe 200 views. You know, that even as depressing as that is, it's like, I still like making content, you know? And, and to prove that, like, uh, I actually, I did two different things. I actually made a complete list of all the movies based on video games. Uh, I just did that recently. I know the video's done. I will give you more footage of Spoonie on in the background. But, uh, so yeah, I spent three days compiling a list of, of all the movies based on video games. And that one was relatively easy because there was already like some pre-made lists and, uh, you know, they, they include like multiple categories you know, the ones based directly on video games, ones that are kind of inspired by video games. Uh, then you also have the theatrical releases, which are separated by the direct-to-video releases. And then you also have, like, other, a couple other categories. So, like, I now I have an Excel sheet, uh, spreadsheet, that has, you know, all the movies based on video games. So they're all there. They're all done. Um and like, it, it took me three days to do that. Like that wasn't so bad. You know, like I have the box office, uh, records for each one, the budget for each one and like the Metacritic, uh, the Metacritic score, if there is one, and I think rotten tomatoes, I tried to have all that information for every single one of them. And then I put them all in, I think I have a rough alphabetical order, but I also put them in chronological order. So, so I wanted to do that and I did that. That took about three days. That wasn't so bad. And then I made another, you know, while I was working on other stuff, uh, like, like the spoony stuff in the background or whatnot, or when I had time, uh, I also spent two weeks and I created a list of all the FMV based games. So, uh, yeah, that, that took two weeks because you know, that's, it's, you don't necessarily find, you know, FMV is not necessarily a category that you can search by. That's why it was harder to find, you know, on Wikipedia, you can easily find, you know, movies based on video games. You can find several different lists, right? You know, I can just copy and paste those, put them into a, you know, another document, make a few changes. And that one, that's why that only took me three days, but FMV based games, that was a little harder. So, so it took me two weeks to create a chronological order, uh, a chronological list of every FMV game. So, so what does that mean? Well, that means obviously the FMV games we're talking about are the ones like on the Sega CD and whatnot, you know, the, the familiar ones like Johnny Mnemonic and, and, uh, I was going to say critical path, but that's only because we, we watched that review, 
of Johnny Mnemonic, and that was one of the games in there. But like the Wing Commander games, and uh, um, what is it? The Evil, not the Evil Within, you idiot. Uh, but you know the, the 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 classic stuff that you think is FMV, like Phantasmagoria one and two. You know, but then that also sometimes will include uh, games that like even even like Medal of Honor sometimes will be. You know, the original PlayStation game will be on a list like that because, well, guess what? It actually uses FMV from, uh, like, a, a historical movie, right? You know, in the game itself. So it's like, well, is that considered an FMV game? It's like, no, no, the original Medal of Honor on PlayStation 1. You know, we wouldn't really consider it an FMV game, but on some lists it gets put in there because it uses, you know, real-world documentary footage, you know, of, like, Hitler and the Germans and, and stuff like that, you know, like that's what's FMV about that. But I still would put that on my list. But yes, like all the arcade games that used early, uh, you know, early video footage, obviously the Laserdisc games, uh, the games made by uh, American Laser. I mean, I, I, I forget the name of it. it. They've been gone for so long. But, you know, like Drug War and... Um, and, uh, but like, you know, now it's done. So like I, I wanted, when I started, I want to eventually be able to talk about, uh, movies based on video games. So I want to have a list of all of them so I can basically talk from experience. Like, you know, like I know all of them are out there or I know kind of in what order they came out too. So it's like, if I'm going to talk about Tron or war games, you know, I can talk about it with, uh, you know, some authority because I've looked into all of them really. So, so yeah, like I, I got more stuff planned. Uh, I want to do FMV game releases, you know, kind of like Spoonie's FMV hell. You know, I got that stuff in the works. Uh, you know, lots of movies based on video games. I, I'm trying to figure out a way to do that. Obviously, I want to be on camera for those. Um, should we talk about background music? The video's already done, idiot. What are you going to do? Okay, background music, basically, um, background music was one of the last things that I put in. I think I put that in on the fourth pass. But, yes, originally I didn't have background music, but then, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's like, you know what, um, that's why I basically did everything that I did uh, as early as possible and planned lots of stuff out so that I would have some extra time to put little details like that toward the end. You know, instead of running up right to you know, January 24th when the video needed to be out. Like, you know, I was, I was working and I was kind of done pretty much like a week before. So, you know, and then it's, it's in that last week or so, you know, that you can, you know, add the extra polish. And honestly, you could argue maybe two weeks, I could have pushed out an early version, but I had the extra time. So yes, I put background music into a lot of the videos and, you know, I, I took a day. It, it literally was like a whole day of like listening to a lot of uh, random and obscure video game background music, uh, lots of instrumental stuff for the most part. And, and I would even look at some of the original soundtracks to some of the movies that Spoonie was covering, like, uh, DOA, uh, dead or alive. I actually used a couple pieces of music from the original soundtrack in that. Uh, and then I tried to find something that was kind of cyberpunk ish inspired, and I used that for the Johnny Mnemonic review. I couldn't find original soundtrack of Johnny Mnemonic, you know, not for the game and not for the movie either. They just had the licensed music that was inspired by Johnny Mnemonic. So, so like, and then I would find a couple of good, you know, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, like, you know, fantasy pieces of music. I'd have those in the background. So it is true what they say, you know, music is one of the last things that you usually you end up looking at and it seems like it's such a low priority, but it really does add a lot to the end product. So, so yeah, I put background music in there. Uh, you know, it, it did, it took a day and obviously I probably ended up adding like another, you know, 40 or 60 other pieces of music along with the stuff that I found. Um, because it'd be like, okay, I, I like this, but I can't quite use it for, you know, a Spoonie review in the background. So I threw that. And since Spoonie doesn't often have background music himself, like I could actually use my background music and overlap it with, uh, you know, the, the movie or game footage or of me talking. And then it would go right into, you know, what Spoonie was saying, aside from the moments when, you know, Spoonie actually has some music 
or other stuff in the background. So like that worked out and that that's what really adds an extra level of polish. You know, you will find, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of people that do like game history or um, just history ofs in general. You know, they, they often have background music, you know, as as simple as it is, just having something there in the background. It really does help. But uh, so, yeah, that's the background music. Um, I believe that's going to do it. We we went over. Uh, we did pretty good. I got through all the things. We didn't get to hang out as much as I wanted to without having to worry about, uh, you know, having, uh, what do you call it, topics that I needed to cover. But uh, But, hey, that is going to do it. That is it. This is the fourth and last audio commentary for all of uh, Spoonie's content. So this will be added to that same folder. So you're looking at seven main videos and four additional. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Four additional audio commentaries, uh, bringing the total to 27 different. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's, it's not 20. It's not 27. It's just seven and and pl plus four so you know it's it's 11 11 objects or not 11 objects you idiot 11 items or videos should be put into the folder in the end so that that lets you know that everything is there but yes this was um this was a lot of fun it really was i know i probably have said that now at the close of every single audio commentary but uh, i mean seriously it really was fun looking at all this kind of stuff um, I really do have no plans to do a documentary style video on Spoonie where I look into his history and all the baggage that he has, you know, acquired over the years. Uh, I, I just don't want to do that. I want to remember Spoonie, at least at this moment, you know, on a happy note, a fun note. I, I noticed that this, you know, the, the main 25 videos is getting more views. So, Hey, who knows? Maybe by this time I'll have a hundred thousand views. Won't that be nice? And we'll see. We'll go from there. But uh, but yeah, I just wanted to share my love of Spoonie with you guys. I wanted to stay positive about it. Uh, if you guys have any kind of messages for Spoonie, obviously leave them in the main videos, of course. And uh, I think that's going to do it. Uh, this is going to be the close of this audio commentary. Thank you so much for giving me all the watch time that you did. Uh, I hope you were able to learn a few things. I hope I wasn't as boring as I thought I might be. Uh, like I, I did record this a uh, total of six times. So hopefully number six, cross your fingers, uh, knock on wood or some wood there. I found some wood. Um, but yeah, so hopefully I don't know why I paused there. I was thinking of making a joke about my dick being wood, but I thought, you know what? I probably should not do that on an audio commentary because grandma might be in the room. And then I told myself, well, whose grandma is going to be in the room for an audio commentary from Stryker, right? So it is what it is. But hey, thank you so much for watching uh, and thanks for tuning in. But this is, you know, I'm not planning on having regular Spoonie content in case you were wondering, but please check out my other series, uh, my How the F Did I Die? And uh, and I'll be having some other stuff, you know, hopefully come out that I'm I'm using my game, you know, my capture card for and whatnot. So if you like my kind of humor, if you like the way I talk about stuff, hopefully in this audio commentary, I didn't say um or ah, or now then, you know, hopefully I didn't do that too often. So I hope I'm uh, uh, at least remotely competent sounding, but, uh, but Hey, thank you so much. We'll see you guys on the next audio commentary, or we'll see you on my channel a little bit later. All right. Thanks for watching. Take a little maggot and use this black pearl and cast it into the black hole! Give me your number. How old are you? I hereby How sentence you, you to the black hole. Nice. In America. No! Your telephone number! So good riddance. <laughs> You're still here? It's over!